All right, folks, let's talk about batteries. These Honda Clarity 12S modules seem like they're pretty useless at a first glance, right? Because they're not 48 volts, they're 44.4 volts, right? But with a tiny bit of ingenuity and some creative thinking, you can use these for a bunch of things. Let me show you a couple. So the first thing I thought was, can I use these as 48 volt batteries? You know, I have a couple of inverters that are 48. And so I'm like, what happens if you connect them? I just plugged it into the 48 volt inverter that I have right there. I'm going to start a discharge cycle and we'll see out of the one kilowatt hour that's in here, let's see how much we can get out before the inverter quits, right? Because these are really affordable. You can buy these really cheap. You know, if you can get them for like 40% off of a, the next cheapest battery, but you're only giving up 10%, well, you're still gaining something, right? You're still, you're still up ahead. So let's test that right now and see just how much energy we can get out of them just using a regular 48 volt inverter. Okay, so we just loaded it up with a kilowatt, 1.1 kilowatt. That's uh, about 23.6 amps and the voltage on the cells lowered up just a tiny bit so they're at four right now uh these can go all the way to three so once they're three uh then i will uh consider this battery dead but i you know obviously the the inverter over there is going to quit before that so we'll see now the adv one of the advantages of doing this is that well, you're not using the full cycle of the battery, right? I mean, you're using the upper portion of the cycle. So there's some degradation at the at the top, right? Like batteries, want, if you keep batteries right in the center portion, then the batteries are gonna last forever. So that's one thing, one drawback about this lithium nickel uh, cobalt oxide batteries, or these are NMC or something, right? So these chemistries usually don't last the thousands and thousands of cycles that other chemistries like lithium iron phosphate would right and so you're paying more for that you know and you can uh generally think about it like that well yeah i'm paying more for a battery but it's because it's gonna last me forever but if you're only using portion of the cycle then these batteries can last also thousands of cycles and so there's a benefit to not using the entire cycle right now you would want to be right in the middle that would be optimal but also if you shift that to the top yeah every time they're charged then they're they're suffering a little bit more degradation that they were right in the middle and so we'll see how this one does looks like at around 46 volts then the inverter stops beeping and saying that the battery is low even though the battery still has um, well this is not right 95% is not right it's six amp hours out of like 25 so that's one fifth Right, how much we've gotten? Yeah, we've gotten, so it's 100, so there's seven amp hours, right? Maybe not, maybe this is the reason why we can't use them. This inverter wants to see a higher voltage. Let's see when it stops. finally quit um it quit at 44 and a half volts and at that point the battery had only given us 11 amp hours right and this is a 25 amp hour battery 
So it's slightly less than 50%, right? Uh, maybe 45% of the battery usable in this configuration with this inverter. This is this inverter though. Let's, I have another one over there. Let's try it. And I think that one has more settings. You could adjust some voltage settings. Uh, we'll see if it does better than this one. Okay, so I've uh, installed a different inverter and look at that. It's still working at 40.5 volts, right? So uh, 19 amp hours so far taken out of this battery, out of this 25 amp hour battery or so. Here's the inverter, have it right there. That's currently outputting 240 volts and I'm charging my car with it at two, two and a half kilowatts. So here's the car, it's being charged. Here we go. Okay, there we go, and it finally shut off. So, 79 amp hours left out of 100, right? So that's 21 amp hours out of the battery. The cells are still at 3.4. Right, which is, uh, yeah, you could still go one, you know, you can go down to three volts safely on these guys. All right, so the results are in. With this uh, Orient Power solar grid uh, inverter, I was only able to use 40, 50% uh, of the battery capacity, right? And then this thing shut off and it didn't wanna go anymore because of the low voltage. But on this guy, the Sun Gold Power Inverter, this is uh, just slightly different. It has a little bit more settings on the batteries. You can choose like different types of batteries and stuff. On this one, we were able to get 85% of the battery capacity out. So it's not so bad. With one of these, you could use, you know, it's like 920 watt hours out of the total 1100 watt hours out of that battery right and so you i mean you could live you could live that you can build a 20 kilowatt hour uh battery uh, using 20 of those modules and then you're gonna get like 18 kilowatt hours right so there you go there is a way to use them just as regular 48 volt uh batteries now uh what are the challenges here? The challenge is that this guy right here and that guy will try to charge your battery to about 54 volts. And 54 volts, that puts your cells at over 4.2, right? Something like 4.4 or something like that. So that's the thing. You won't be able to use the charger that's in here to charge your battery. You'd have to use a separate charger that you can set it to about 50 volts max. Here is another use case for these. Uh, there's a bunch of these solar power packs, right? That it's an inverter and a battery and a solar charge controller, everything put in a one box. But to extend that or to add an external battery to it, what we're doing is we're putting uh, batteries on the input solar, uh, on, the, on the solar input port right and we've been doing that for a long time i want to say i'm the first one that did that on the internet but now if you look in there on uh youtube there's a bunch of people that are doing it with all kinds of you know just uh plug and play batteries you can buy a 12 volt battery uh or a 48 volt battery at 24 or whatever then you can put them in the thing in there so with these you could do that too this is uh 44 volts that import th that that solar port doesn't really care of the voltage that much, right? It's a huge range that it's usable. And so on this guy, for example, it goes from 10 volts all the way to 75 volts. And so this being uh, fully charged at 50 and then fully depleted around 36, it's right there in the middle. And so you can use it. Right now I was charging my electric car using this. And uh, once it got down to like 20, then I disconnected it and now it's charging. So the problem with this unit right here is that it only charges at a maximum of 300 watts of solar, right? So that's it, you're, you're limited to that. Uh, and so this is putting in 300 watts. And when I was charging the car, this thing could output like a 1400 watts or something like that. So it's going to deplete, right? Uh, and so of course you can just turn it off and then let it charge again and then connect it again and do that. But if you have a load, that it's about 300 watts and you have a bunch of these, you can set these in parallel, connect them to your thing and then you can run this continuously. You know, you can run it 
for a very, very long time. Plus, there are other models of these. We have the bigger ones. And I'll make a video uh, detailing how to do that, a separate video, because then, you know, the question is how do you BMS this, right? This doesn't have a BMS, it's just purely just raw cells here that are put together in this module. And so, you know, we have this connector for the thing. So we'll make maybe like a board in here where we put uh, 12S uh, BMSs in there and connectors and stuff. And we'll make this little unit into its own, you know, standalone unit that it's going to be great to install. Well, to uh, add to all these uh, power inverse solar power packs and stuff, right? So that's another way that you can use these 12S modules. And the reason why I'm looking to add or figure out ways to use these modules is because they're available and they're really cheap. And so um, they're going to be way, way more affordable than buying, you know, plug and play battery uh, or some other batteries that are DIY also, right? So. The reason is because people don't seem to have any imagination and uh, how to using these, right? And so that's why I'm doing this. I'm showing you ways of using them so that uh, we find uses for them because otherwise they're just useless. They're just sitting in pallets and warehouses doing nothing, right? And this should be, this is good battery and they should be used. So this is yet another way that you can use it. By the way, I never, almost never, never ever ask my viewers to hit the like button and to subscribe. But I think I should probably start doing it because uh, you guys are not liking the videos. And if you like batteries uh, and you wanna watch someone like me, like an idiot like me, just play around with batteries and blow stuff up from time to time and stuff, uh, yeah, you should probably subscribe. I've, uh, the work continues here. There's so many, so many projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, that are all battery related and energy related um, that you probably find the videos that I'm gonna be posting pretty interesting. And then if you're subscribed, well, that helps me uh, stay motivated to doing videos and stuff. So thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Man, that's crazy. That's what a Rivian looks like at night. All right, so a year later, we got this one a year and we tried charging in this same station here and it was pretty painful. You have to connect, disconnect, try again, call them, do all that stuff, right? So I'm like, has it gotten any better now a year later? No, the answer is no. She used the card. She's got a uh, an account and so she was able to connect and charge really quickly. I struggled over there because I'm just using my ATM card or my credit card. But this one connected, mine connected, and then it's still connected. Hers disconnected now. So now we're still trying to figure out what's going on here. Still as painful as ever. You can see the difference of one foot. Okay, is it gonna start? We have to change payment method, payment card, connecting to vehicle. There's some clicking going on. Green! Is it charging? Is it charging? Ah, oh, it's charging. 